Good morning. This is Bill from Curious Cars. I don't look at the cat over there. That's not the big one, though. Peter's got that giant cat, which frankly scares the crap out of me. I mean, you'd think, if anything, it would eat some of the birds at least. And if it has, I haven't seen it. In fact, I've watched it sort of maze on the driveway while birds fly overhead. So uh, it really needs to get its shit together and start going after them. Uh, that looked like one of the smaller cats, though. Which, again, Peter with cats is also quite the strange phenomenon in my mind. He's just not the type uh, to have them, I suspect. But um, eh, who the hell knows how shit happens. Anyway, uh, it's a fantastic morning. It's like, uh, it was supposed to be 49. I don't think it actually was. I think the lowest reading I saw so far was uh, 53. But there's not a drop of humidity out. It's absolutely stunning. I've got a nice light jacket on, shorts. I feel refreshed. Uh, this is definitely my time of year, my weather, and so far, knock on wood, or, you know, faux wood, as the case may be, uh, we're having a pretty good winter. It's not just hot, hot, hot. Uh, you know, oh, an unseasonably warm weather, and everybody's happy. Well, I'm not when it is, and uh, this time it feels like we're getting an actual proper winter, so uh, things are chipper in the world of Bill and Curious Cars. I'm also chipper because I have this. This is a 1979 Lincoln Continental uh, Coupe uh, with the Town Coupe package. Uh, it's finished in a dark champagne metallic. Uh, it's got some sort of, uh, I don't know, artificial limb tan interior. Uh, and it is absolutely stunning. And it has just 14,000 actual miles. Uh, quite a find, in my opinion. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, I mean, it comes from the malaise era, so-called from that era of sort of uh, odd hair on the back of the neck misery between, what, 76 and 79. <laughs> I'm sure it had nothing to do with Jimmy Carter. I'm sure he's a very fine guy uh, in his own way. Uh, but anyway, the malaise era, and often it's looked down on by people and, you know, the kids who, you know, were in the, the romper room in the 80s think that the cars sucked from the malaise era, and uh, the only now are they starting to figure out that that's not entirely true. Uh, you know, what uh, cars lacked in horsepower they made up for in graphics kits and other ways, but uh, this thing, even in 1979, was a massive holdout. This was it. This, uh, the coupes and the sedans in the Continental Range were the last, the very last, giant full-frame car cars on offer from any of the three makers. GM had downsized in 77. Uh, if anybody even thought about what Chrysler was doing, they were gone in 1978. And Ford and Lincoln alone in 1979 uh, had these big dinosaurs roaming the earth. And that was, in fact, how they marketed and sold them. I'm sure a lot of Cadillac guys were heading over to Lincoln saying, you know, thank God at least somebody's still making one of these things. Uh, this car was one of the longest coupes in history at the point the five mile an hour bumper saw to that. Uh, in fact, the sedan version of this car is the longest car that Ford Motor Company ever made. That was it. It never got any longer than that. And uh, it came out in, I want to say 1970, uh, using the uh, longer, lower, wider philosophy uh, and replaced that uh, John F. Kennedy Continental. If you, I suppose that's kind of a shitty way to refer to it, but damn it, it's the truth. One of the big differences between the fourth, that uh, Kennedy Continental on this one, is that one has, you know, it had more optimism about it. When it came out, it was sleek, it was modern, it was interpretive, it was looking towards a bright future. Uh, by the time this thing rolled out in 79, it was like an enclave for people to get in and hide themselves from a really unattractive world. Uh, but uh, either way, it's, it's just a terrific car. In 1979, there was also some fascinating shit going on. Uh, uh, first off, and I meant to do this at the opening, uh, yeah, man, uh, Chuck Yeager passed away today, one of the last true great American heroes, and uh, that is a, a sad day for uh, for the nation, for me, for you, for everyone. I mean, what a guy, what an incredible cat, and uh, we're, uh, you know, we're all going to miss him. 
Uh, what else happened? Uh, in 79, uh, you've got, uh, it's not a great year for dictators. Pol Pot and uh, Idi Amin were out, gone, done. Uh, however, Saddam Hussein and the Ayatollah Khomeini did come in, so they, you know, kind of kept the balance where it should be. Uh, you also had the first Happy Meal that came out, delighting kids everywhere, including myself. Uh, that little broad from California, Brenda something, Brenda Mary Spencer, I think, uh, she uh, shot up a school in 79, sparking that Boomtown Rat song, I Don't Like Mondays. When they asked her why she did it, that was her answer. <laughs> I have to admit, it's a damn good answer. Uh, what else happened? Uh, Sony Walkman came out uh, in the movie. The feel-good movie of the year was The Deer Hunter. Um, what the hell else went on? Skylab fell to the earth. A little interesting tidbit about that. Uh, some of it fell in Queensland, Australia, uh, immediately prompting a $400 fine from that company or from that country to NASA uh, for uh, littering, which NASA did not pay. Uh, they said, the hell with it. We're all the way over here. Why the hell do we need to worry about what Australia is up to? And then later on, some radio host, you know, did a fun drive and paid them off. He ended up getting the keys to the city for paying in the fine or something. Uh, but anyway, there you go. So the Skylab was littering the earth. Uh, interestingly, also, it's the first recorded instance of a robot killing a human being. Uh, there's a harbinger of things to come. Uh, that was, in fact, that Ford Motor Company, one of the robots there took out one of the workers, maybe over a coffee dispute or something. Uh, but uh, either way, that was it. That was the first recorded instance. So anyway, a lot of interesting crap happening in uh, 79. Uh, you know, there was disco, God help us all, uh, leisure suits, uh, you know, that sort of thing. And uh, this car did fit very nicely into that mix. Uh, you can see it's the, the chamfered fenders, the slab-sided look, the, uh, you know, they had gone to a, this used to have a big wide grill when the Continental came out in 70. Uh, now they'd gone to the sort of shorter Rolls-Royce looking thing with the hideaway headlights that are fantastic. Uh, wish I could demonstrate those, but I'm all alone and I don't know how else to do it. So uh, maybe I'll figure out a way to do that at work and add it to the video, but the uh, the headlights all work great and they're pretty cool. I love the big chrome bumpers, the continuation of the waterfall grill into the bumper, uh, big clear running lights there on the side. Uh, also those big uh, lights on the uh, side of the fenders are cornering lights, so when you put your signal on at night, they light up the whole curb beside you. Nice. These wheels are fascinating to me. I mean, uh, they were a very expensive option. We have the window sticker for this car. They're like almost 400 bucks in 79. That was a pretty big deal. They are forged aluminum wheels that are cunningly designed to look exactly like hubcaps. Uh, you really have to hand it to Lincoln on this one, but you know, they even tricked me. I was quite sure they were a hubcap when I first saw them. I thought, oh, what a shame. It didn't come with alloys. No, not only did it not come with alloys, it came with the upgraded, higher-end forged aluminum wheels that just don't look that way at all. But anyway, <clears throat> absolutely fascinating. Uh, being the town coupe, it had sort of a chrome package. You can see it's got, uh, you know, of course, the big chrome bumper. It's got this big chrome line going over the wheel wells, under the rockers, all the way to the back of the car. More chrome on the top of the fenders, around the windshield, around the back of the hood. And then look at the length of this piece. It runs from here, still walking, all the way down and around to the back. I mean, I don't even know how they shipped that back then. Uh, it must have come in a tube the length of uh, Mean Joe Green, so very, very impressive. Uh, being a town coupe, and I see it as an accent a goo there, so it's a coupe. Can't say that without feeling stupid. Uh, but uh, anyway, there it has that, uh, I don't know, that's half, 45%, 40% uh, padded vinyl roof that came on the town coupe uh, versions, along with this square opera window with the Lincoln logo sort of, you know, molded into it. And then these great opera lights, absolutely neat stuff. And you can make fun of all this. I mean, you know, as I read somewhere last night, the, you know, the only guy who had heard of the Nuremberg Ring at the Ford engineering plant when they designed this was the guy who had bombed it in World War II. And, you know, that's true. The car doesn't really handle altogether very well, but that isn't really the point. Uh, and, uh, you know, looks-wise, it does have a style. 
you know, it was styled. This is a rather interesting, attractively styled car. And I, you know, look at a Prius today. Whatever styling it has, just... It, <laughs> It just looks like every other damn thing, and that's the way of cars, uh, you know, probably from 1992 or so onwards. And, you know, back then, back in the 60s, 70s, cars definitely had uh, a sort of a thing that, that they were vying for that made them look more appealing to at least a certain segment of people. Uh, in the back, you've got great little lights on either side, more of the chamfered fender look, a big reflective panel with reverse lights in the middle, little bumperettes that, um, that extended rear bumper bumper that, you know, help keep the standards up. And uh, anyway, let's just get in the trunk. Still has that great little flip up thing. Two keys, one for the trunk, one for the ignition. It's also, oh, it's also vintage. I've got my uh, crap in here and a car cover it came with. Apologize for that. Uh, but you can see an absolutely enormous trunk. I, you know, I'm not going to get into that ridiculous. Just because a car is a big trunk, we don't have to talk about bodies. And just because this is a Lincoln Coupe that was undoubtedly driven by countless gangsters at the time doesn't mean that uh, we have to talk about what might have gone in here. But I guess I've just done that anyway. Uh, there you can see the jack stowed inside that little compartment. I love these little clips here. It feels more high quality than I would have expected. Uh, there's the spare tire. Lovely. And, uh, and really and truly just a very nicely finished trunk. Uh, all very well put together and uh, you're not going to have any trouble fitting crap in there. Let's get that back down. Have a look under the, the original power antenna. Love it. Okay, by 1979, the era of the giant motor was coming to a close. And in fact, 79, they even did away with the optional 460. Uh, when these cars first came out, they all had 460s. In 78, uh, the standard engine was the 6.6 liter 400 called a mid block. Uh, not quite a large block, a big block, not quite a small block. And, uh, the, you know, you couldn't get the 460 then in 1979. This was it. This was all you got crappy horsepower rating again the malaise era all of the uh, you know emissions and that sort of thing uh, but it did have lots of v8 torque so that was something so even at like 160 horsepower some crap number like that but up over 300 uh, pound feet of torque so it did motivate this big car down the road and uh, you know the car weighs about 5,000 pounds which sounds like a lot but you know so does your average midsize SUV weigh that now so uh, it's just not uh, not not as heavy as you would think for the size of it. Uh, Ford's ridiculous coffee cans. This one has two, presumably because of the vacuum-operated headlights. Uh, as someone was kind enough to point out to me in another video, uh, those are vacuum canisters to hold vacuum for useful things. Uh, you can see everything is just immaculate under here. You'd expect that with 14,000 miles. Uh, you know, the original Motocraft uh, AC compressor, still all the decals on the side of that corporate blue uh, Ford block and, you know, everything looking real nice and proper and clean and the way it came under there. Very, very nice example and a nice big V8 in this big car. Get that back down. I do love that grill. God, do I really. I'll have a look inside. The opera lights, they work too. I tested them first thing. Okay, inside, I think these things came standard with leather, and this had a leather delete option uh, to bring in this remarkable velour. I mean, it's like from a small furry animal or something. Uh, it is pretty incredible to sit on. It looks like frosted, frosted cloth of some size. It's just very neat. It's got all the pillow stuff, so it's super comfortable. You can see it's very well bolstered for cornering. Okay, no, it, it obviously isn't. Uh, it's just basically a couch that goes down the road and you sit in it. And then on top of it being a couch, they have done everything in their power uh, to make as minimal effort as possible to drive the damn car. So the steering is so over-assisted, uh, you barely have to touch the wheel. Uh, the seats are power, the windows are power, the wheel tilts up and down, the brakes are so over-assisted, they'll put you through the windshield if you hit them too hard. And uh, the car is just made to uh, do away with the idea that you need to expend any effort while driving an automobile. Love this little chrome handle. Pull that down. So there you've got more of that pillowy stuff in the back. 
your Canadians, uh, they just aren't going to be any more chipper. Even in the back of this, this is a six-passenger coupe. <laughs> Tell me that wasn't the end of an era. Uh, you know, the Panther platform replaced it. And yeah, you could also have a six-passenger coupe in that, but it just wasn't the same and didn't quite have legroom like that. Uh, you can see all the Lincoln logo stuff that's inscripted into the velour. I won't pull it out because if I lean in there, I'm never getting out. But there's a little center console for you uh, and some uh, power window switches in the back. There's yeah, no light switches and uh, a couple of ashtrays because, of course, everyone was still smoking back then. God bless them. And uh, anyway, even back here, the velour in the back of the seats is amazing. You know, this was, I, what, I, again, but you get into the 90s and there was basically like two color choices for interiors in almost every car, uh, dark and light. Uh, back in this era, there was like 50 or 60 different choices you could have. And I'm making it up, but there was a lot. Uh, they definitely had more uh, interior color stuff available uh, because, uh, you know, money was not being thought out of very well by the accountants at the time. Uh, in 79, they just tripled up on the wood trim. They used to have silver trim in the model before it with a lot less wood. Uh, when this one came out, they really really applied the faux wood everywhere. You've got it here on the side. Uh, you got it here on the window switch. You got this little run around here. You even got little wood things inside the door pole. Uh, and then, of course, you've got wood on the steering wheel and a wood dashboard. Uh, you also have a very vintage and proper looking headliner, all original in the way it came. And I love this. Uh, seat belts were, of course, so radically new and exciting at the time. Ford had a big warning system telling you how to use them. The guide rings and such. Nice that that's still with the car. It's a good key in and gives you that sickly 70s buzzer sound. Two of them now, actually. And <laughs> that big V8 firing to life. Uh, before I put the window down, I'm going to show you this. I love this. So you've got the frameless glass, which is great. Run the window down, and it starts with the little vent window first. Pretty cool stuff. So when this is closed, there it is. There's your smoker window. And then if you keep on it, it'll run the rest of it down. Pretty neat shit. Uh, the problem is, when other people are parking your car, uh, look at that heated mirrors, that's nice. When other people are parking your car, they tend to put the windows up if they were down. And if they're not paying attention, they leave it just like that because they don't think about the second one coming up. So you got to watch those valet parkers. I'm sure Barnaby Jones had a very tough time with that. Uh, there you see that giant expansive hood in front of us. Absolutely amazing. Uh, this was the first uh, Continental to have a hood ornament, uh, or at least the 70 was in some time. Maybe uh, they brought it back in the mid 70s. Uh, again, they had gone to this sort of sleek, you know, modern thing that uh, <clears throat> had sort of drifted away by the time this car came out. Uh, they also went to uh, Dash, it shared with the Grand Marquis, and uh, part of, um, you know, the wood stuff was to differentiate that for the Lincoln. Uh, and also, I can't probably see it in this light, but it has this very cool sort of blue background illumination. Maybe you can kind of see that on and off. Oh, and while I'm doing that, I open the lights so you can see those things. Let's get the high beams on. It's our indicator. There you go. So those things pop up and, uh, you know, that's a sure way to win my heart is pop up headlights every time. I also like that the car is so square, but the lights are round. So anyway, you can get those back off. Uh, there you see the sort of horizontal, uh, you know, bar uh, speedometer. Uh, 14,000 miles on the clock, as indicated on the actual mile title. I mean, not only can you feel, look at the wheel on this thing. Come on. I mean, it's amazing. Not only can you feel the 14,000 miles in this car, driving it, loving it, you know, that sort of thing, but it's also documented. Uh, you can see the neat little... This isn't a dimmer control, that just resets your uh, trip odometer. There's your uh, PRNDL, you've got a row of warning lights there. Over here you've got your wipers and lights. Uh, you got a tilt wheel that goes up to like bus style. So if you want the wheel to be almost horizontal, you can do that. I don't know why Ford does that, but they do. Uh, and you've got uh, cruise control in the wheel, which is nice with a little 
Lincoln badge that obviously cost them some money to make. It looks very nice. Love the chrome stalks. Love the uh, shifter in chrome. Uh, it's got this original Cartier clock that, God help us, is actually working. Absolute miracle. That's pretty cool. Uh, I set it last night, which was terrifying. I was sure I was going to break it as I was doing that. And then here is the original factory 8-track stereo. Uh, we've had that on before. That was that, uh, what he's singing about, that really smutty broad who's going around screwing all the guys and uh, Summer and then waiting for Don when, you know, when they go home. Okay, yeah, Don's the only guy that's left. All right, so I'll go back to him. I don't know the hell with her. Uh, you've got an actual automatic climate control, like the wheels and hubcaps, cunningly designed to look like it's a manual climate control, but is in fact automatic, and the heat works great. Uh, the power antenna, let's see if we can see that. See it? Yeah, still working. <laughs> very, very nice. All proper and as it should be. Uh, we got a, what do we got? An ashtray down there with a quarter in it. Uh, we've got the world's largest cigarette lighter. I've never seen it. I mean, what the hell is going on here? It looks like the docking module for the lunar mission. I mean, that is the biggest cigarette lighter I've ever seen. Very, very strange. Uh, you've got the town coupe uh, embossed. You've got a couple vents here for everybody. Let's get this open. This is neat stuff. Here's your original owner's manual. And here is, look at that, the original window sticker for this car, which I was surprised cost an absolute fortune. A fortune. Uh, first of all, the town coupe option was another 1500 bucks on top of that 11 grand, the uh, regular Continental cost. And uh, then you've got the, where are those wheels? They shocked me. I gotta find those somewhere, the protection group. That's what we need. Wheels, yeah, there it is, four forged aluminum. 373 bucks, that's like what AMG wheels cost currently on a Mercedes on the option pack, ah, maybe a little more. But anyway, the premium moldings, the this, the that, all adds up almost, uh, well, not quite, almost 15, but over 14,000 uh, bucks, which was a ton of money back then, considering you could get a pretty well optioned Cougar XR7 for about seven grand, so uh, twice the money of that. Uh, there you see, what do we get? 12 miles per gallon based on 15,000 miles a year, 70 cents a gallon. Ha <laughs> ha, love it. And uh, anyway, there it all is. Uh, and it was uh, delivered by Convoy, another great uh, 70s kind of crap. And I think we also have in here, I'm going to screw all this up. And there's the original uh, temporary registration it came with. And there's a receipt for presumably the guy's down payment where he spent. Uh, I don't know, 3500 bucks to drive it off the lot. So very, very cool stuff to have that documentation with it. I'm going to try to put it back in without screwing it up and get that closed. And we'll be in good shape. Over here, you've got your uh, left side mirror. You've got your right side mirror here. Uh, you've got your uh, power seats. They're the same on both sides. They all work great. Love it. Tilting myself, cruising myself away. Windows, so on and so forth. I'm going to dispense with the seat belts for the moment. Put them on later. They're kind of a pain to put on. Let's go for a drive. Wish I had an 8-track on me, like Johnny Paycheck or something. Air supply. This car feels very proper with electrically opening gates, actually, I have to say. Feels like exactly the car that I should be pulling up to the gates in. Ah, you gotta love the 70s. It'd be nice to have a leisure suit or a car jacket or something to drive around in this thing. People do notice it, man. I guess because it's, first of all, it's friggin' enormous. But secondly, it's just so differently styled from everything else on the road today. Uh, let's see how Dalton did on the windshield. My guess is going to be bad. Yeah, bad is a safe guess as per usual. Uh, the hell with the sun. We're just going to keep with it anyway. And so, again, with these Luxo boat things, this giant body on frame uh, construct, which, by the way, the Continental that came before it was unibody, based on a lengthened Thunderbird platform. So uh, the Continental was not just the last car to downsize this one. Uh, it was also one of the only cars that ever went from unibody back to body on frame. Very, very sort of bizarre move from uh, Ford on that one. We talk about Henry Leland, the guy who made Lincoln. Uh, he, first of all, he made Cadillac. 
uh, and drew away uh, Henry Ford's team as investors to start it, which pissed Henry Ford off. And then years later, he made Lincoln after having a fight with uh, Durant, the head of GM, who was a pacifist and didn't want to build bombers for uh, World War One. So he made Lincoln basically with the idea that they were just going to get this big government contract to build bombers, which they did. Uh, but it wasn't enough. And in 1922, they went into receivership. Well, who comes along but Henry Ford, hot for revenge and angry at Leland, lowballs the company, you know, offers like five mil for a 16 mil company. Even the court said that was ridiculous. And uh, I think uh, Ford ended up buying it for uh, eight million bucks. And uh, forever since, it has been Ford's, uh, you know, premier luxury line. And now that they've gotten rid of everything else, Jag, Aston, and all that other stuff, it, it is their only luxury mark. Uh, and they've got uh, Matthew McConaughey running around making ads for it. That was a bit of a diatribe. So anyway, you know, being this giant Luxo boat with, you know, look at this shit. I'm going to stop so you can do this while I'm driving. You can actually steer this car with your pinky. Try that with your current car. That's how over-assisted it is. The brakes you barely have to touch. Uh, but you don't really steer this thing. Like, what you do is you pick a point in the distance. Pretend you're driving a sea ray, like a very big sea ray. So you pick a point in the distance and you just kind of navigate towards it, making little course corrections as you go. Uh, that's why a lot of these old cars have compasses on the dash, you know, just like the, um, uh, just like the big yachts did. You picked a heading and you stuck to it. I'm not, there's no reason at all to hammer this thing, get on it. It's just going to strain. I mean, it's not It's not meant for that. I mean, this is a cruiser. Uh, it's very happy to get up to speed. Uses this, um, I don't remember, a C3, three-speed automatic. I don't know, it's C30, whatever the hell it is. A real bulletproof Ford automatic. And uh, it just drives really nice. This one also has a limited slip option in the back, which is great. <laughs> I think you could do a Bozzy burnout. Anyway, for the highway part, I'll do a picture of that. I mean, I'll stop here and move on because this light takes friggin' forever, so I'm not going to wait through it. Uh, but here it is, 1979 Lincoln Continental Coupe with the Town Coupe package. The absolute last of the Mohicans. I mean, this was the last giant, full-sized, full-frame car that was made by any American maker. This was the end. This was the end. The cafe standards, the gas crunch, the safety stuff, your Ralph Naders, it all killed this car. And uh, we did lose something that I think was very uniquely American when that happened. Uh, the end of a, a really incredible era. And, uh, and this is it. You know, that was it. Uh, in 1980, Ford went to the Panther platform, which seems big by today's standards, but was small compared to this thing. And as good as it is, uh, it just didn't hold a candle to the uh, full-frame insanity of this car. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for having a look. I appreciate it. Uh, this car is available at Auto House of Naples. Frankly, it's one of mine. I went out and, oh yeah, gee, let's race. I want to race you. Tired looking F-150, because that's what I do. Uh, anyway, for sale at Auto House of Naples, nice old car, 14,000 documented miles. If you have an interest, give them a call, 239-263-8500, on the web at autohousenaples.com. And I am going to uh, come up with some other crap to do. I don't know. We still got that Riviera. I promise it's coming. And uh, some other fun. I got a TR6. I got some interesting stuff on the way. Uh, thanks for having a look. Really appreciate it. We'll see you with the next one. Take care.